Let me tell you the story of 12 of the busiest days of my life, but also some of the most profitable. Let's go. Alrighty y'all, it's gonna be a big one, so let's just jump right into it. Start out by uh, cleaning up the plasma table, replacing some slats, and getting ready for these cuts. Hey. Forklift isn't working. That is. Is it working now? Yeah. Okay, good. For once, my schedule is actually kind of light. I had 12 days to build the sign for this wall right here and get it powder coated. So I was looking forward to a little bit of relaxation, but quickly a lot of orders came in. So we're gonna jump over to the table and start cutting out some Weld It Yourself kits right there, and then our actual sign. By spending the time to kind of plan things out and have some smaller pieces, you can use up the spare space in a sheet so you're not wasting as much metal. So. Here's uh, the first half of our sign. It's actually 17 feet long, so it's a pretty big one. And we're gonna jump over and use up that little strip left at the edge of the sheet, making some more Weld It Yourself kits. These are the small hexagonal fire pit kits. And I will have a link down in the description to my website and to a playlist of videos where you can see some of these kits being put together. And as you can see, by laying those cuts out smart, really not a lot of material left here that's gonna have to go to waste. It's less than 10% of the sheet in most cases. Even with complicated shapes, you know, you can get it under 15 or 20. So we start laying out the frame here. It's just gonna hold the sign stiff, make sure it doesn't wobble, and support the LEDs that will eventually light this sign up. Everything is going great until... So what happens when you get to rushing when you were trying to get a bunch of stuff done? It's supposed to be sitting here upside down so we can weld on the back of it. It's right way up, so we just weld it on the front. Luckily, I think I can fix it. So what you see right here, that, that, and all these little weld scars and the grinding cut marks. If this was getting painted, we'd bondo this, feather it out, and it would go away. But this one's going for powder coat. So these will show up. You know, you won't see them from five feet away, but you know, for what people pay for my signs, it's not going out the door. So we're recutting this one. So as I run the same file I did earlier, not only cutting out a new face for the sign, but also some more Weld It Yourself kits, Tommy is cleaning up the letters that dropped out of the sign, which we'll come back here and use shortly. We're gonna make the frame now. It's basically some two inch by uh, one inch or maybe three inch by one inch C channel sitting up three quarters of an inch away from the face of the sign so that rainwater doesn't pool up in that C channel any more than it has to. And I'm gonna put in a couple little spacers there just to reinforce the sign. But it really doesn't take too much. This is 12 gauge, so it's pretty stiff as it is. Now for the mounting from the sign to the wall, I'm gonna use some half inch threaded rod and I just weld nuts right into place there. Weld them on the threaded rod so I know the spacing between them is perfect. And I don't worry too much about them being perfectly vertical as long as they're real close. Because when you go to push these into a brick wall, if they've got a little skew to them, it kind of jams into the wall, which helps everything kind of stay in place as you're doing the install and that threader rod will flex enough. Now the second part of the sign here, we line up to the first, this time being extra careful to make sure everything's the right way around, and reference off of the first piece to the second to build the frame for that one. In order to connect the two pieces, I'm gonna take, again, a half inch piece of threaded rod, spin two nuts onto it, spaced out however I feel, and then weld them to the sign. This way, when I go to assemble it at install, put a piece of threaded rod in there and the spacing is perfect. Don't need to worry about adjustments. So in order to blend out the weld scars on the front of this plate from where we welded from behind, I'm gonna be using a weld coat abrasives, AO Prime, very fine blending disc. It's basically like a flat disc made of scotch Bright. Now blending out the weld scars isn't crucial, but I feel like it just adds you know, a nice little bonus, makes everything look a little cleaner. Now the letters that dropped out of the signs before, I'm gonna take and put into the pieces. This actually happened before the frames went on. 
put it some little spacers and just use some three quarter inch rod, weld it all up. And now I have a display piece that I can paint, put on the wall, do whatever with. And really the cost to me was 20 minutes of time and like 10 bucks for the square tube. Now everything gets put on the trailer, prepped for powder coat and dropped off at the powder coater. My powder coater is pretty quick about turning these around. So we were ready for install uh, two or three days later. And unfortunately in Oklahoma at this time, this is middle of February, it was like 31 degrees with about a 40 mile an hour constant wind. You can see we're all out there dying. We put on the threaded rods and I generally leave them running long. Uh, if we can get those through the holes, it just means less cuts to have to make, but we cut them down. <laughs> There's the intern. <laughs> it was so cold out there. But we stick this through the wall. Uh, after the builders got the electricians all sorted away, I came back and put lights on this and made everything perfect. So the reason you stay up on your uh, tetanus shot if you're a metal worker is 16 gauge metal is kind of sharp and hurt. So for the rest of the video, I'm going to jump through a lot of the plasma cutting because you guys have already seen that. And if you've been following along for a while, you know what plasma cutting is. If you haven't been, I invite you to subscribe. This sign was nine and a half feet wide, which is just slightly longer than my table can cut. So we're ripping lines into it. And then we're gonna take the sign over to the welding table and finish those lines out with a grinder. First scoring along a straight edge and then actually doing the cut. We'll jump back in after having done all of those and get everything cleaned up, ground, you know, make everything look, look nice before we start moving panels across each other and potentially scratching them. Then we're gonna mark off for that nine and a half foot length, check our corners, make sure we're square, and cut to that length. One very effective but very nasty tool, metal cutting saw. If you watched the recent video I did on stepping up your CNC plasma game, there's gonna be a card for that you will have seen basically the same style of frame, except we're gonna step it up one more level here, which I think just makes these signs pop. You're not gonna see any attached uh, visible fasteners, and it, the whole sign just looks a lot classier, a lot sharper. We start out with that three quarter inch square tube and laid out. Now I'm gonna put some eighth inch spacers around the edge and lay on some one inch angle iron. Right now I'm just tacking that lightly from below, just kind of tack, 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 tack to attach the two, cause there's a bit of a gap. Then I'm gonna take the angle iron, cut some notches into it so it just slides right into place, makes a real clean look. I wanna have the least amount of grinding possible on the face of this. Repeat that around the bottom and the two sides. We'll pull that top piece out, it's always kind of sticky um, because of the welding, but when you weld on the back here and actually finish out those welds from before, everything opens up a little bit and those panels slide in a lot easier after that. Grind everything to clean it up, and then you'll see basically this is the construction. The back panel goes in, then the front panel. Oh, take a break. To talk about today's sponsor. No, I'm just kidding. But what I do want to tell y'all is I am launching a Patreon page where I will be taking every build video I do, including this one, and breaking down the costs, the tools I used, everything that went into it, and how I arrived at my final price. So if you guys have gotten something from my videos that's helped you with your business, I'd love to have you over there. If you're just a viewer who wants to support the channel, heck, I'd love to have you there too. There'll be a link down in the description. Thanks for checking it out. Hope to see you there. But let's jump right back into the build. Doing a little bit of cleanup there of just anywhere the plasma table didn't make a perfect cut. And now we're welding up the top that will cap everything off. It's just a piece of angle iron with some end caps on it so it kind of slots right onto the sign. Then we're gonna weld out the frame, finish anything up, put in some gussets for mounting this to the wall. And then that top cap attaches right to the frame with uh, just five holes drilled into it and we use some panhead self-tapping Phillips screws. So when you're below looking up at the sign, you can't see any fasteners whatsoever. 
So this is actually a two-part project. There's gonna be the sign we just built on the building, and then they have one in their lawn, so you can see it from the street. I'm gonna cut those parts out, do a little bit of cleanup again. And this is kind of a layered sign. It's hard to describe, so we'll jump ahead. Tommy's cutting out some spacers to get all that layering right. And then we put the backer pieces between these two posts, their four inch square tube, that we're gonna come back in behind and weld some tabs to. The face plates there will be bolted to those tabs, locking everything together as one solid piece, but making it easier to install. Hey, I'm 58 and five eight. 58 and five eight. Jesus Christ, that's <laughs> You're holding the gun like this so you can see. Yeah. But you need to be holding it a little bit. You need to be coming out at like a 45. Because mm -hmm. you see how you're laying onto this uh -huh. instead of that. Unfortunately, there really wasn't that much more footage of that part of the build. So everything's gonna go to the powder coater, get cleaned up, taken care of, and we get them back from the powder coater a couple days later. And I just love the way things come out after powder coating. It's always worth it. Oh, that's gonna look good. Now that we're about halfway through this crazy 12 days with three big projects done, we're gonna take a minute to just kind of clean the shop up and then get started on cutting out some panels to make this weird cube shaped uh, coffee table thing. It was actually just a temporary installation. So it didn't go powder coating. We just did a uh, pretty basic paint job on it and now it's back at the shop. So if you're in the Oklahoma City area and think it looks cool, I will make you a mean deal on it. Let me know. So the whole reason I had a hard deadline for these projects was I had to leave for Workbench Con, where I got to meet some awesome people. Now, on the way, a viewer had gotten in touch with me, he has a sign shop, and we got to talking, and I decided we should do a sign swap. I said, you make my logo, I'll make your logo, and we'll have a little bit of fun with it. So you see me cutting his stuff out there, and then just burning the rest of this sheet up with rocket stove kits because I don't know what happened, but I got a bunch of orders for them. And if you guys are watching, I appreciate that. It is a great little added bonus to the shop. I don't make a whole bunch of money on them, but hey, I appreciate it. Thanks. That's all that's left of that 14 gauge sheet. Lay your cuts out smart, and you'll save yourself some money. So as our deadline approached, I had Tommy in the shop even more than normal. He's cleaning up rocket stuff parts while I package up the kits. You get the four plates, a little instruction booklet, and some stickers. So we jump right back into the build for my viewer over at Tiger Metals. I'm gonna roll a ring here of like three quarter inch flat bar that we can mount some LEDs to, and then we'll take it over, trim off the edges, and it gets welded to his sign eventually off camera and then painted with some texture and then eventually black. I'm here at Tiger Metals in Huntsville, Hartsel. Hartsel, Alabama. And uh, we decided it'd be fun to do a little bit of a sign swap. So I made their logo and then they made me look like a jackass by making mine a lot better. <laughs> So we had two more little projects. One is uh, just a wedding guest book nameplate. Uh, I'll have a link in the description to my website where you can check these out and the video where we made the last one of these. Then we clean the table up so we can work without scratching plates and jump right over to cutting out the base of the next sign. This one was for a uh, restaurant supply company and so it's like a spatula and fork. I actually think their logo is really cool uh, with a blue flame in front of it. Cut those parts out, uh, prime them, they get painted, and this little piece here is gonna have a order put on it and then LEDs attached around the outside so it has kind of a blue glow. Actually, it's RGB, so it's whatever color you want. The background here is stainless steel, and then we 3D printed off and painted a bunch of letters. Um, didn't film any of that, so here is a picture of the finished product. So finally, the last project of this 12 days of crazy, and I cannot tell you how glad I am to have taken a break after this, was making a channel lettered sign. I'll have a card here to a video that goes over the entire process. This one is actually for my barber. So we cut the parts out, and again, any extra space on the sheet, 
make Weld It Yourself kits out of. We're cutting out the letters, but not nesting them together to save metal. I'm making a full-size stencil of the sign, which will make assembling this thing in the end so much easier. And again, look at how little metal was wasted. The pieces are cleaned up and ground, and then I move over to channeling. And this was, and I think I stayed at the shop for two days straight to do this. It's just, you know, 10 to 15, 20 minutes uh, per letter. It's a lot of work. Uh, but man, the final product just speaks for itself in my book. I am a huge fan of them. It's a whole lot of handwork. There's really, other than the plasma table, nothing here is done by a machine. But God, I, I don't know. I love when customers spring for these signs. I think they look great in the end. That just works so well. You know what I mean? <laughs> the stencil is worth every cent. It sure is. The top goes together much like the bottom piece with the stencil. And uh, it's time to paint. So I got to stay at the shop to keep putting coats on. But I'll tell you, if you've never inflated an air mattress with seven and a half horsepower of air compressor, it's pretty quick. So sleepy time. We're back up and at it with a couple coats of paint on and all of the light blocking acrylic that we use. Again, see the video if you want to see this whole process. We, um, all that has to dry. We start putting LEDs in and then it's paint, sand, paint, sand, paint, sand until we build that coat up to whatever finish I'm happy with. In between there, we have some textured paint as well. Then we go to install. This sign is actually replacing a smaller one I built uh, quite a while back. Uh, the permitting rules changed, so we took the old one and put it up at the shop so that I can show it off to customers on how these lit channel lettered signs work. So, install finishes out with us putting it on there, and no joke, this was the morning that I left for WorkbenchCon. <laughs> I was running this one right down to the wire. Uh, storms were threatening, but we got it done. So. I want to thank you all for stopping by. Um, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Subscribe if you feel like it. I'd love to have you on Patreon. And until next time, thanks.